Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be taking a look at the 7 best classic Japanese motorcycles ever made. Number 7. Honda CB750 Let's take a ride down memory lane with the Honda CB750, the rebel that rolled onto the scene from 1969 to 2003. The CBA750 has an air-cooled, inline four-cylinder engine wonder, strutting its stuff like it owned the place. Back in the day, it was the hot shot in the motorcycle world. It had a 736cc four-cylinder motors, basically, the muscle car of motorcycles. Simple by today's standards, sure, but back then, it was like bringing a spaceship to a bike fight. Why the buzz? Well, the CB750 was the first ever production motorcycle to flaunt a transverse, overhead camshaft inline four engine. It was the rock star of two wheelers. People loved it so much that Honda had to crank up production because everyone wanted a piece of the CB750 action. Designed to be a stable, easy to ride speed demon, the CB750 left a mark on the motorcycle design world that's still visible today. It stuck around for a solid decade with over 400,000 units hitting the streets. Talk about leaving a legacy. Number six, Suzuki SV1000. This bad boy has been cruising the streets since 2003. And let me tell you, it's not your grandma's scooter. We're talking about a motorcycle that's as naked as your morning coffee. No frills, just the good stuff. Under the seat, you've got a liquid cooled 996 CC engine. It's a four stroke 90 degree, eight valve V twin, DOHC, TSCC powerhouse that's spitting out 116 horses. Now Suzuki didn't stop there. They threw in some fancy tech called Adual Throttle Valve, because you know, one throttle valve is just too mainstream. Fuel injected for that modern touch, this bike means business on the road. In 2004, someone at Suzuki said, let's make this thing even better, and they tweaked the ergonomics. So it's not just fast, it's comfy too. It's not a super bike, but it's not your average Sunday cruiser either. So, there you have it. The Suzuki SV1000, a two-wheeled legend that's been turning heads and burning rubber since the early 2000s. If motorcycles had a yearbook, this one would be voted most likely to make your heart race. Number 5. Kawasaki Z1 Meet the Kawasaki Z1, the cool cat of motorcycles that strutted onto the scene in 1972. It's got a four-cylinder, air-cooled heart, double overhead camshaft brain, carburetted lungs, and a chain drive backbone, a true rebel on two wheels. Now, the Z1 wasn't just any run of the mill bike. It was the trendsetter that made in line, across the frame four cylinders, all the rage. You could say it laid the groundwork for the modern Z1000, Kawasaki's current big shot on the block. Zooming into the Z1's resume, it boasted a claim 90 horsepower, and could hit a top speed of 132 miles per hour. Back in the day, it was the speed demon, leaving everyone else in the dust. The Z1 wasn't just a looker. It was a game changer. Its design and performance echoes in the halls of motorcycle fame. Some say the Z and Z1 stands for being the last letter of the alphabet, following the cool Kawasaki trend of the time. Number four, Yamaha VMAX. The Yamaha VMAX, or as we like to call it, the VMAX has been strutting its stuff since 1985, making heads turn with its 70-degree V4 engine, shaft drive, and a style that screams, look at me. The 2007 version was like a fine wine, almost the same as the 85 classic, but with a few touch-ups in 93 for that extra oomph. Picture a larger fork, four piston brake calipers, and some other fancy upgrades to keep things spicy. Fast forward to 2009, and Yamaha drops a completely redesigned VMAX sporting an all-aluminium frame, a liquid-cooled 1679cc engine, and, and an instrument readout that's brighter than your future. It's got Yamaha chip-controlled intake, adjustable suspension, anti-lock brakes, and a slipper clutch. Plus, they threw in a fuel tank beneath the seat because why not? Tech-wise, the VMAX is no slouch either. LED taillight, digital speedometer, trip meter fuel gauge, it's got all the bells and whistles. Competing with the Ducati Diavel, which seems to have borrowed a few zeros from its price tag, the Vimax is the eye candy of the Indian biking scene. Muscular design, a stance that says I'm here to impress, but not trying too hard, the Vimax is the two-wheeled equivalent of a rock star in leather. Number 3. 
Honda CB92. The Honda CB92 is the two-wheeled wonder from the late 50s to early 60s. This bad boy was practically a twin sibling to the RC142 racers that tore up the Isle of Man in 58. With sleek aluminum mudguards, a nifty chain guard, and a fuel tank that winked at the prototype CB71, this motorcycle knew how to turn heads. And hey, it held a respectable 10.5 liters of fuel. That's like having your own personal gas station on two wheels. But wait, there's more. The rear suspension was all about flaunting those springs, and the 8-inch magnesium hubs were like the cherry on top. When it came to stopping this beast, drum brakes took the spotlight, with the front ones doing a twin-leading shoe dance. Under the exterior, you've got a straight-talking, parallel twin, four-stroke engine. It's the kind of powerhouse that had two valves per cylinder and a chain-driven overhead camshaft, a true heartthrob. So, there you have it, the Honda CB92, a mix of speed, style, and a dash of retro charm. It's not just a motorcycle, it's a two-wheeled time machine back to the days when the road was your playground. Number 2. Kawasaki GPZ900R Meet the Kawasaki GPZ900R, aka the Ninja 900, the two-wheeled legend that ruled the streets from 1984 to 2003. It's the OG sport bike, the founding member of the Kawasaki Ninja family, and a total game changer. Now, what made it so special? Brace yourself for the fun facts. It boasted the world's first 16-valve liquid-cooled inline four-cylinder engine. Yep, they were basically setting the trend for cool bikes before it was even a thing. With a 908cc, four-cylinder engine pumping out 115 horsepower. This bad boy could hit 151 miles per hour, officially making it the first road bike to break the 150 barrier. Oh, and the GPZ900R wasn't just about breaking speed records. It had the charisma to match. Bagging the Bike of the Year title in various countries and making a cameo in Top Gun, it became the two-wheeled heartthrob of its time. Being the best-selling bike globally for a hot minute, the GPZ900R left an indelible mark on motorcycle history. Even after its retirement in 2003, whispers of a comeback still circulate, proving that this icon refuses to be forgotten. Number 1. Yamaha RZ350 Alright, check out this cool ride. The Yamaha RZ350, also known as the RD350 YPVS. It rolled onto the scene in the 80s and stuck around until 96 making it the final boss of Yamaha's RD series. Under the seat, it's packing a two-stroke liquid-cooled engine with twin cylinders, giving it a 347cc kick. This bad boy cranks out 52 horsepower. Now, what's really fancy about this bike is its Yamaha power valve system. Think of it as the bike's own DJ, adjusting the exhaust port for some serious power play. The RZ350 marked Yamaha's debut of the perimeter frame, in the US. Imagine it as the stylish backbone of this beauty. The design is on point, sleek, with a minimalist yet sporty fuel tank, and a frame that's as eye-catching as the bike itself. But let's not forget the real star here. The RZ350 is drop-dead gorgeous. It's like the 80s through a party, and this bike showed up dressed to impress. The narrow body exposed engine, and that steel perimeter frame. It's a visual. So, there you have it. The Yamaha RZ350, not just a bike, but a statement on two wheel. And with this, we have reached the end of this video. If you found it helpful, then make sure to like it and subscribe the channel for future upcoming videos.